spiritual Gurudev, Asmadiya Paramaradatama Guru Pada Padma, Nitya Lila Paravishta Om Vishnu Pada Ashtotara Satasi Rupanuga Charivarya Sila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswam. Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev to Sila Prabhupada, to Param Pujapada, Sila Bhakti Vaiba Puri Goswami Maharaj, Parampuj Pahad Sila, Bhakti Pramod Puri Goswami Maharaj, Parampuj Pahad Sila, <coughs> Bhakti Rakshak Shida Dev Goswami Maharaj, Nitilila Prishtom Vishnu Pahad, Ashtodas Shimad, Bhakti Pagan Keshu Goswami Maharaj, and to Sila Prabhupada and to all of us, Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I have for my pranam to Parampujapad, Sri Bhakti Lok Paramadwaiti Goswami Maharaj, Sri Bhakti Dhati Yati Maharaj, and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis, Vancha Kaupaturu Rasa, Pupas Hindu Rasa, Putitana Pavani, Yes, 
sit in your translation groups. And when you are sitting comfortably, let me know. Try to focus this most of Sri Guru and the Goranga. Yesterday, we began the celebration of Sri Radhastami Maha Mahotsava, the appearance day of Srimati Radhika. Perhaps you know that it is said that when Radhika was in the womb of Kirti Ramaya, At that time, Yoga Maya Devi transferred Radhika from the womb of Girtida to the womb of the wife of Vindhyacha, the Vindhya mountain. Why was this? Because the Himalayas, he became very proud that he had a very qualified son-in-law because the daughter of the Himalayas is Parvati. And Parvati married Mahadev, Lord Shiva. So he was very proud of his son-in-law. And uh, Vindhyachal, another mountain, the god of another mountain, he became somewhat uh, in a spirit of competition with Himachal. He could not tolerate the glory of even his own uh, caste of mountains, or to speak of outside his group. So he did austerities to please Lord Brahma. And Lord Brahma said, I'll give you a benediction what you want. He said, I want to have a son-in-law who is more famous than his son-in-law. <laughs> so how can you have a son-in-law who is more famous than Shiva? And more qualified than Lord Shiva? Only Bhagavan himself is more qualified than Lord Shiva. So that meant that Vindhyacha would have to have a daughter who was the consort of Krishna. So Brahmaji blessed him. And Yogamaya transferred Radhika from the womb of Kirti Damaya to the womb of the wife of Vindhyachal. Also Chandravali was transferred and kept there also. And she had the twins. So uh, at that time, Radhika and Chandravali were twin sisters. But they did not know it. Why? Because Vindhyacha, he wanted to also become taller than the Himalayas. So he was doing austerities and he was getting bigger and bigger and he became so big he was blocking out the sun. So to save the people, Agastyamuni came there. And when Vindhyacha saw Agastyamuni, he gave Dandavat pronouns. And uh, Agastyamuni told him, just stay there till I get back. And then Agastyamuni, <laughs> he went away and he never came back. So Vindhyachal is not so high as the Himalayas, but very long. <laughs> so Vindhyachal was lying down. When Krishna appeared, at that time, Narad Muni, he told Kamsa Maharaj, Vishnu, who killed you in your previous life, when you were Kala Nemi, will appear in this world. And he will also appear along with five shaktis. Hmm? So when Kamsa Maharaj heard this, then he was thinking, I'll kill Vishnu. So he sent uh, Putana to go everywhere and kill all the children who were born within 10 days before and 10 days afterwards, just to make sure. Hmm? And he told Putana, kill the boys, but you should collect the girls. Because you can find the Shaktis of the Supreme Lord and then bring them to me and I will enjoy the Lord Shaktis. So this is the nature of the demons. They always, they have no savabriti, spirit of service. They have only bhogabriti, the spirit of enjoyment, the spirit of exploitation of the Supreme Lord's energy. Everything is the energy of the Supreme Lord. There is nothing in existence which is not the energy of the Supreme Lord. There is nothing in existence which is not the paraphernalia for his enjoyment. There is nothing in existence which does not exist for the sake of Sri Krishna, including you and me, our very souls. 
Oh, the Atma. We are manifested from the Paramatma for the sake of Krishna's service. Jivera Surupoi Krishna Nitya Das. But those who are in illusion, in Rajas and Tamas, they have the Asurba, demonic mentality. They always want to enjoy the energies of the Lord. And Kamsa Maharaj, he wanted to directly enjoy the female Shaktis of the Lord. So, Putana was going everywhere, killing the baby boys. But you know that the demons had taken birth on earth at that time to assist the demons in their battle against the devotees. So by the arrangement of Yoga Maya, wherever Putana went and killed some children, those were the demons. So in this way, in Krishna's Leela, the Leela Shakti is using one thorn to remove another thorn. So don't worry about Putana killing the children. It was uh, from her own demon uh, group. So when Putana was going everywhere, she came to Vinjachal and saw the baby girls Radhika and Chandravali. And she kidnapped them. Then, when the Putana was flying away, Vinjachal was lying down, he could not get up because of the order of Agastya Rishi. So then he told his brahmanas, oh, chant the anti-rakshasi mantras <laughs> to protect my children. So the, he uh, protected uh, the, the brahmanas, they chanted the anti-rakshasa mantra. And the uh, Putana dropped the uh, Chandravali. And Travali, Chandravali uh, was uh, found by Bishmaka and she became the daughter of Bish Bishmak Maharaj. And uh, so she is, that is Rukmini, she's not different from Rukmini. So, uh, later Jambavan caught her under the order of Yogamaya and brought her to Braj and then she grew up in Braj as, as Chandravali, as Radharani's rival. But they did not know that they were sisters according to that birth as the uh, daughters of Indiachal Mountain. And when uh, uh, Putana also, she dropped Radhika and Purnamasi Devi bought uh, Radhika and gave her to Mukara. Now Mukara is Radharani's grandmother and she's so close to Krishna's family that when Madhya Yashoda was a baby, she used to breastfeed Madhya Yashoda with her own breast milk. So there's a very close relationship between Radhika's grandmother and Krishna's mother. And then Mukara uh, gave Radhika to Kirtida Maya. So this history has been described. Uh, it's mentioned, just touched in some Puranas, but especially it's been described in detail in the Lilith Madhav of Srila Rupa Goswami. But you should know that this Leela happens in certain Kalpas. It is a Naimitic Leela. It's not a Leela that happens every day of, of Lord Brahma. And uh, this is a, a Naimitic Leela for the sake of that drama of Lalit Madhav. So yesterday we were discussing how uh, the, the king, Suchandra Maharaj, and his wife Kalavati, they entered into, they did austerities in a previous life to get the Supreme Lakshmi as their daughter. They entered into Prishwabhana Maharaj and uh, Kirti Damaya, and Prishwabhana Maharaj found Radhika on a lotus flower, and Lord Brahma came and said, oh, this is your daughter. You have done austerities in a previous life that the Supreme Lakshmi will be your daughter. You should take care of her. So, uh, Brishwabhan Maharaj took her home. So most of the people see Radhika in this way. But we Gaudiyas, the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and the followers especially of Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Das Goswami, because our relationship with Krishna and the relationship with the Radhika is of natural love, lokik sadbandu bat sambanda, like the loving relationship you'd have with your own family member or bosom friend. So we never uh, have in our meditation these types of opulent pastimes. So in Bhakti Ratnakar and also in the Prajabilas, there it's described that Radhika has appeared like a natural child from the womb of Kirti Damaya. So in this way, we told two ways of Radhika's appearance yesterday and another 
way of Radhika's appearance in different kalpas described in Lalit Madhav of Rupa Goswami. So it is said, Kalpa Bedeshu Harikata uh, Harikata Subhava. In different kalpas, then Krishna and Radhika do their Leela in different ways. And so if you see in the scripture di uh, apparently contradictory explanations, then you should understand that this is, there's no fault in the scripture, there's no contradiction, only this is an explanation of a pastime from another kalpa. So yesterday we were hearing from the Briyat Gautamya Tantra, and there is mentioned Sava Lakshmi Mai Sarva Kantim Sammohim Para. Radharani Sava Lakshmi Mai. That means that as Simati Radhika is the Purna Shakti the complete potency of Krishna and as all the avatars are the expansions, the answers, the, the vilas roop, the vaibhav prakash roops, the tadekatma roop of Krishna, various answers of Krishna. So similarly, all the goddesses, they are the various answers or portions of Shimati Radhika. So the various goddesses are of three levels. The Lakshmi Devis in Vaikuntha, the queens in Dwarka and the gopis are in Vrindavan. So the Lakshmi Devis in Vaikuntha and every Vaikuntha planet, there is one Lakshmi Devi presiding in each Vaikuntha planet. So the Lakshmi Devis are called the Vaibhav Vilas of Shimati Radhani. And then the queens in Dwarka. Dwarka is Maha Vaikuntha. It is superior to the uh, Vaikuntas of Lord Narayan. Why? Because on each planet of Lord Narayan there is one Lakshmi. But in Dwarka there are 16,108 Lakshmis. And they are superior to the, the Mahalakshmi of Vaikuntha because they are Radhika's Vaibhav Pakash. So Lakshmi Devi is the Vaibhav Vilas and the, because the Vilas Vigra have four arms. Mm -hmm. And the two arm forms of Radhika's expansions in Dwarka, they are Vaibhav Prakash. And the gopis of Vrindavan, mm -hmm. they are Radhika's Kaya Vyuha. That means direct bodily expansions. Radhara Swarupa Krishna Prima Kalpalata Lalita Saki Ganohoe Tarapala Pushpapatta. Radharani is like a creeper. Mm -hmm. Krishna Prima Kalpalata. Just as there can be a magical wish-fulfilling creeper. So Radhika is the magical wish-fulfilling creeper of Prem because she fulfills all the desires of Krishna. And Lalita, Vishaka and other gopis, they are all the uh, Palav Pushpapata, that means the leaves, the flowers and the manjaris, the small buds which are just appearing. So, Mahabhav Chintamani Radhara Swarup Lalita Disakri Tarakaya Vyoharup Radhika is also called the Mahabhav Chintamani. She's made of the highest love, Mahabhav. And just as a Chintamani can fulfill all desires, whatever desires in the heart of Krishna, Radhika can fulfill. And whatever desires are also not in the heart of Krishna, Radhika will make them appear and then fulfill them. Krishna even gets more desires that he never knew he had by the association of Shimati Radhika. So Maha Bhav Chintamani Radha Sarup Lalita Nisaki Tara Kaya Vyuharup. The gopis are Radhika's expansions. She has so many moods of love for Krishna. And each one of these moods has a murti, a vigraha. So each one of the gopis of Vrindavan is the Bigraha, the Murti, of one of the special moods of Shimati Radhika. So persons who say, Lord Ram is very good because he has Ekapatni Bharat. He has a vow to only love one woman, that is Sita. But Krishna, he is very bad. In Dwarka he has 16,108 wives, but in Vrindavan he has Shatakoti, Gopi, Madhavama, and hundreds of millions of gopis. Hmm? We say, no, no, no. Krishna is even more chaste than Lord Ram. He's even more dharmic than Lord Ram. By the Prem Dharma. 
Dharma. by Prem Dharma. Why is that? Because in Ram Lila, no one loves Krishna more than Sita. Hmm? So he's completely dedicated to her. But in Krishna Lila, every single gopi of Braj has more love than Sita Devi. Everyone. There's not one gopi in Braj who doesn't have more love than Sita Devi. And Krishna has promised. I reciprocate with everyone. So see, Krishna has to reciprocate with every single gopi of Braja. Because they see, uh, Lord Ram is Mariyada Purushottam. His love is expressed within the boundaries of Mariyada, proper etiquette and the rules of Dharma. But Krishna is Lila Purushottam. He takes Dharma like a football and kicks it very far away. And he only acts according to Lila. What will make more rasa, more praise? So he is Lila Purushottam. So he is reciprocating with all the Braja Gopis. But still, when Radhika leaves the Rasa Lila, then Krishna abandons all the Gopis to be alone with Radhika even though each and every one of them loves him much more than Sita. And even though his nature is Lila Purushottam, and even though his nature is to reciprocate with everyone, but he leaves them all only to be alone and serve Shamati Radhika. So we think that Krishna is the most chaste person. He has more Ekapatni Brata, even the Lord Ram. And on top of that, if we look at the situation from the perspective of Tattva Bichar, of metaphysics, of ontology, <coughs> every single gopi is herself Radhika's own expansion. So it's not that Krishna has many, many lovers. He has one lover, Radhika, and Radhika has many, many forms to only to please him. Krishna, Kanta Shiramani, to Sarva Kanta, that means she fulfills all of Krishna's desires. Why? Because Bahu Kanta Bina Nahi Rasera Ulas. Lila rasa hoi lagi bahuta prakash. Unless there, there are many lovers, then the rasa cannot go to the highest point. It's very, very deep, very deep point. Because all of these gopis, they are actually in competition for Krishna's attention. So if you have a school, and one boy in the class is very intelligent, but all the others are uh, very low IQ, kind of room temperature IQ, then the, the, that boy will not work very hard because he'll be top of the class even without studying. But if there are many boys in that class who are very intelligent, then every night they're staying awake throughout the whole night studying, studying, studying to try to become the top of the class. So where there's competition, everyone is benefited from this. So in Vrindavan, Radhika has become so many gopis the various groups of gopis are in competition with each other, uh, competing in praying. And who is the winner? Krishna. Hmm? Krishna benefits from this. That is called Prema Pratyogita. Hmm? Prema Pratyogita. The competition of love. So in this way, Radhika has manifested all the forms of Praja Gopis to please Krishna. So now, Ramananda Rai, explained to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about the surup of Radharani. That Radharani is made of Mahabharata and in her transcendental form she has astasatvic vibes, eight ecstatic symptoms of becoming stunned, perspiration, trembling, mm, the fading of the color, the choking of the voice, the tears flowing from her eyes. So in this way, Astasat Bhavs are manifested in her body. And also, she's decorated with Sola Shringar, 16 types of golden ornaments. And uh, Dwarash Abaran, that means 12 types of cosmetics. But don't think that her ornaments and cosmetics are made of uh, gold or silver or some uh, chemicals. So, the earrings of Radharani 
They are made of what? Love. The greed to hear about the qualities of Krishna. So because Radhika's ear, ears are always greedy to hear the qualities of Krishna, they are very beautiful and that greed is manifest in the form of her ears. The, the lipstick on her lips, the tambu rag, this is not only the red juice coming from the chewed tambu, but this is her rag, her deep attachment for Sri Krishna. The kajal, the eyeliner, the black eyeliner under her eyes, is not, uh, we cannot say it is made only of lamp black, but this is her brain kutilya. That means the crookedness of her love, because those who are crooked are black. Krishna is Sham Sundar. So he's very crooked, he's Tribanga. Hmm? And he has Sham, dark complexion, like a fresh rain cloud. <coughs> so uh, her black kajal is a kajal, is a color like Krishna. And so that's the, the crookedness of her brain. So in this way, Radhika is called the Mahabhav Swarup. She's decorated also with 20 Bhingsati Baba Lankar, 20 emotional ornaments. In classical Rasa Shastra, these 20 emotional ornaments have been described, but Radhika has two more, Chakit and Mugda, in addition to the 20 uh, classical emotional ornaments, Bhav, Hav, Hela, Shobha, Dipti, Kanti, mm, the uh, Vichiti, Vilas, Vibram, Motaita, uh, Kila, Kinchit, Kutamita, and so on. And Radhika is also wearing a garland. And the garland, the flowers in her garland are her 25 prominent qualities. So Srila Rupa Goswami, now we're coming to our subject for today. Subject today is the 25 prominent qualities of Radhika. Actually she has unlimited qualities, but these 25 are very prominent. And that is manifest as her garland. So Rupa Goswami has, has a Explain. Madhuryayam navavaya chalapangu jala smita charu sobhagyari kadhya gandun madita madava sangeeta parasabhikya ramya vanna mapandita vinita karuna purna vidadda patamandita lajasila sumaryadha Darya Gambirya Shalini Vinita Suvilasa Mahabhava Paramutkarsha Tarshini Gokula Prema Vasitir Jagat Shaini Lasadya Shaha Gurva Pita Guru Sneha Saki Pranaita Vashaha Krishna Priyavali Mukya Santa Tastra Vakeshava. So these are the 25 prominent qualities of Simati Radhika. They are divided into uh, four categories. The first categories are the qualities of Radhika's anger of her body. Then the next qualities are the qualities of Radhika's speech, Vak. Then the next qualities are the qualities of Radhika's mind. And the last qualities are the qualities of Radhika's relationships with different types of people, such as her superiors, her friends, and Krishna and so on and all the residents of Braj. So, today and tomorrow, we want to remember the 25 qualities of Radhika. So, we'll begin at the beginning. First of all, Madhur Jayam. That means sweetness. Radhika is very, very sweet. Sweetness has been described. Madhur Jam. Madhur Nam Nama Pichasthanam. Avasta Sarva Vastasu Charuta. The person who, in every moment, in every movement, in every activity that they perform, they are exquisitely beautiful and that beauty is increasing at each moment. So this is called Madhurya. Madhuryayam Navavaya. Navavaya means that uh, Radhika is eternally in the um, adolescent stage. She's not a child and she's not fully adult, but in the adolescent stage, moving towards adult, this is called Navavaya. So this is very beautiful. 
Because when Radhika is a little girl, then her eyes are steady. Hmm? But her body is restless, running around here and there when she's a little girl. Hmm? And she's a little bit round hmm? here. So, but when she goes into Navavaya, then the roundness of her belly is stolen by her hips and her chest. And the waist becomes very thin. So Navavaya is very beautiful. And the restlessness, then she was always running around as a little girl. This was stolen by her eyes. Now eyes uh, very, very became very restless. So in this stage, Navavaya, she becomes so extraordinarily beautiful. So Madhuryayam Navavaya Chalapangu Chola Smita. The next quality is that Chalapanga means the eyes are just like a deer in the forest. A female deer in the forest, the doe, has very, very big eyes. And if they hear a sound, then they're looking here and there, very quickly. So Radhika's eyes are like that. One time Krishna came to Radhika. Oh, I'm thinking. Chalapanga Ujjwala Smrita. And the next one means the sweetness of her smile. Her smile is very, very bright, even if she smiles very slightly. And just a little bit of her teeth is showing. Then, oh. Kripayati yadi radha Badita shesha padha Kima parava vashistam Mukti maryada Pushti maryada yorame Yadi vadati cha kinchit Smeraha sudita sri Jujavara mani pancha Mukti sukcha tada kim That is Gosaiji, the son of Valabacharya. That is Vitalnath. He has written this poem to Radhika. And he said, oh, oh Radharani, if you will give just a little of your mercy to me, then all my obstacles in spiritual life will be washed away forever. Oh Radhika, if you will give just a little mercy to me, then what will be left for me to achieve on the path to Sri Mariada Yorme? That means, uh, in the Valap Sampradaya, Mariada Marg means Vaidhi Bhakti. And Pushti means Raghunuga Bhakti. So there will be nothing left for me to achieve on the path of Vaidhi Bhakti or Raghunuga Bhakti. And O Radhika, if you will just smile slightly and speak some sweet words to me, hmm, then I will see the shining of your beautiful teeth, hmm, which are like uh, effulgent, like Kunda flowers. And then, then I will think mukti is insignificant and dry and pathetic. And I will reject mukti completely. So, how beautiful is the smile of Radhika? So here, Rupa Goswami has said, Madhuryayam, Madhuryayam Navavaya Chalapongu Chola Smita. Four qualities of Radhika's body and all these four qualities and more they have been described very beautifully in Radha Rasa Sudhiniti by Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati. There Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati has prayed may Madhuryam the sweetness of Radhika in ten ways always manifest in my meditation. Gaurangay Mradima Smite Madurima Netranchale Dragima Vakshud Jay Garima Tataiva Tanima Majay Gato Mandima Sronyam Cha Pratima Bruvo Kutilima Bimbara Rishonima Sira Deridite Rasena Jadima Dhyanes to me gochara. Dhyanes to me gochara. May ten sweetnesses of Radhika manifest in the core of my heart. What is that? Gorangay mradima. The first sweetness of Radhika is that her golden body is mradima. Very, very soft. Hmm? Once Rupamanjari decorated a beautiful bed with the uh, uh, jasmine flowers mm -hmm. and they also remove the stems as well and put the jasmine flowers on them <coughs> and then Radhika after she was resting there she got up and on the back of Radhika and on the legs of Radhika 
Wherever she was lying down on those jasmine flowers, there was the imprint of each and every flower on her body. Rupamanjari told her, Saki, oh Saki, these jasmine flowers are too hot. We have to get a different type of flower next time. <laughs> so how soft is the body of Radhika? This is very sweet. And this smile of Radhika is very sweet. Why? Because when Radhika is in the forest with her sakis and she sees Krishna coming, then Lalita said, Oh Radhika, Krishna is coming. Everyone, ignore him. So they all turn around from where he is and pretend to be picking flowers. Uh, we have to increase the Krishna's eagerness uh, by playing hard to get. So Lalita Saki gives this instruction. Uh, Krishna is coming. Everyone ignore him. <laughs> so they're picking flowers like this. So as Krishna approaches, then he sees Gaurangi Radima. How soft is the beautiful form of Radhika? Smite Madurima and the smile of Radhika. Why? Because when Radhika sees Krishna, she feels so overwhelmed with Maduras, the romantic mood that the Anubhav comes, the, the reaction, that means the outer manifestation of the feeling in her heart, that she will smile. But at the same time, because the elite is telling, ignore Krishna, then another Sanchari Bhav comes. Hmm? First, the day, harsha, the joy, and, that, and Otsukya, eagerness to meet with Krishna. But because the Lita Saki told her to hide her mood, then Avahita Bhav comes, another wave of Sanchari Bhav. And because that is called Avahita, the concealment of emotion. So Radhika would smile so much, but because she's trying to conceal her emotion, she's trying to stop that smile from coming. So she smiles just slightly, and a little ray of her beautiful teeth is showing. Just a little. So then Vishakasaki says, Oh, when the moonbeams appear, then the Chakora birds come running. You know, there's one type of bird that is a Chakora, and it stays alive only by drinking moonbeams. So when a flash of light, a moonbeam, Chandrika, comes from the moon, then the Chakora bird comes and, oh, and eats that to stay alive. So in the same way, <laughs> if Radhika just, she wants to smile, but Lalita is making her suppress the smile, and a little mm, bit of her teeth are showing, then one Chandrika, just the Chandrika comes, and then the Chakora bird is running. Very, very thirsty to stay alive by drinking that Chandrika. That, who is the Chakora bird? Yamuna Jivana Keli Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora So Krishna is like a Chakora bird coming to drink the moonbeams of the smile of Radhika. So Gaurangi Radhi Masmite Madurima Netanchale Dragima Radharan is trying to uh, ignore Krishna. So she's turning her face away from him. But her eyes are very big, uh, almost reaching around to her ears. And when she's squinting her eyes a little, then it looks even longer. And when Radhika is turning away from Krishna, but she cannot help but look towards him quickly. Chalapangu Jalasmita. Chalapanga means very restless eyes. Then, the flash of the blue light of Radhika's eye comes from the side there. So, at that point, Netranchale Dragima, the eyes of Radhika, one of her sweetnesses, the Dragima, the length of her beautiful lotus eyes. Vaksu hmm? Jai Garima. And all her hmm, body is very beautiful. Tataiva Tanima, as she's turning away from Krishna, Krishna sees the slenderness of her waist. Hmm? And Radhika starts to walk away from Krishna. So, Gato Madhe Mandima, here means that her walking is very graceful and slow, like an elephant. You know, when an elephant walks, they're, they're very heavy. 
So they step with one leg and then the whole body swings this side, then they step with another other leg and the body swings this side. Huh? So Radhika is called Gajagamini. When she walks, her hips are moving from side to side. So this is another sweetness of Radhika and the quality of Navavaiha, her usefulness, because she does not walk like this when she is in the Pavandalila, when she's a child. But when she becomes Kishori, now her walk is very attractive. Hmm? So, uh, cha pratima bruvo kotilima, and her eyes are the. That means her eyebrow is kutilima, very very crooked. Because when Krishna approaches Radhika and catches her cloth, then she raises her eyebrow like that. So just as if you want to shoot an arrow from a bow, the bow is almost straight. But when you pull the arrow back, then the bow becomes bent. So when Radhika shoots the arrow of her glance towards Krishna of disapproval, then she raises her eyebrow and it becomes like the two arches of a bow, shooting the arrow of her glance. <laughs> and the, the next sweetness is the redness of the lips of Radhika. So Krishna cannot, though Radhika is turning away and trying to get away from her, Krishna cannot resist and he catches her and embraces her. So, Sri Radhe Riddhite Rasaina Jadima, the final sweetness of Radhika is the Jadima. Jadima means inert, senselessness, when one becomes completely stunned. So, Radhika's heart becomes completely stunned by the touch of Sri Krishna. So, may the, the rasa of Radhika's stunned heart, Dhyanes to May Gotra, come into my. Mm. Meditation. Srila Prabhupada Nanda Sasa Thakur is speaking in this way. So, Madhurya Yam Navavaya Chala Pongu Chala Smita. These are the first uh, four qualities of Radharani, of the 25 qualities. Then the next one, what is that? Charo So Bhagya Rekadhyaya. The next quality of Radhika's body is that she has 50 auspicious lines on her body. Just like we all have some birthmarks. Hmm? We have some birthmarks here or there, or we have fingerprints and lines on our head. So Radhika has very, very auspicious markings. Hmm? She has seven markings on her left foot, eight markings on the right foot, 18 markings on the left hand, and 17 markings on the right hand. So all these together make 50 uh, auspicious marks on the lotus hands and feet of Shimati Radhika, such as the barley corn, the altar, the ankush, uh, that is the, uh, the gold, just as a, an, a, a train of an elephant can control a mad elephant by taking the gold, it's a, like an iron hook, and they put it behind the ear because it's very soft there. And so the rider, who's very small, can control a big elephant. So in the same way, though Krishna is like a wild, mad elephant, and no one can control him. But Radhika can control him by the ankush of her man, of her sulky mood. So there's the flag and the wheel and fish and triangle and so many auspicious markings on the hands and feet of Shimati Radhika. And this is why during the Rasalila, when Krishna disappeared from the Rasalila and took Radhika with him, when the gopis were searching, they found the footprints of Krishna. And gradually, gradually, they noticed, oh, now, next to the footprints of Krishna, is a footprints of someone else. Anaya radito nunam Bhagavan Hari Ishwaraha Yano Vihaya Govinda Prito Yam Anayadraha. Who has spoken this verse? A gopi is saying that, oh, this gopi, whose footprints these are, must have worshipped Krishna better than any of us, more than any of us. Because Krishna has abandoned all of us just to be alone with her. So she's very fortunate. So Srila Shukadeva Goswami, he would not out, outwardly, directly mention the name of Radharani. But when he got to this verse, he could not control himself. And he almost said the name of Radhika. Anaya Radhito Luna Bhagavan Hari Ishwara. When the gopis were following the footprints of Krishna and saw that other gopis' footprints. There were four types. Swapaksha, Radharani's own group. Surit Paksha, 
the group which are friendly to Radhika, led by Shama. Then the Tatastapaksha, neutral group, led by Badra. And then the Vipaksha, the anti-party, who are in competition with Radhika's group, that is led by Chandravali and her Sakis, Shaitya and Padma. So, when all those gopis saw uh, the footprints of Radhika, then one group of gopis have said, Anayara Nunam. Oh, this gopi is the most glorious. Which group was it? Hmm? It was not it was not Radharani's own group Sopaksha. Why? Because when Radharani's own group saw the markings in the footprints of Radhika, they recognized her and they were in so much ecstasy oh, that Krishna has left everyone to only be with our Swamini Radhika. Jai Jai Sri So they were in so much ecstasy that they could not speak. So they have not spoken that verse. Anaya Radhita Anulam. On the other hand, Chandravali's group also recognized the footprints of Radhika. And they were so jealous that they also could not speak. So they have not spoken this verse. The Tatasta group, the neutral group, because they're neutral, they don't care, so they wouldn't say anything. Because neutral people, those who are Tatasta, they don't care. So, the Deva have Tatasta Bhav. Neutral Bhav. Hmm? Never have Tatasta Bhav. This is the enemy of everything in Bhakti. Hmm? You should always have Mamata, possessiveness. Hmm? You should think, oh, this is my Gurudev. This is my. Uh, Radha Krishna, my Radha Krishna's temple, oh, my Gurudev's mission, my uh, uh, Radha Krishna's Murdanga, Kartals, everything. I have Mamata for everything connected with Guru and Sri Krishna. Hmm? Otherwise, if you have Tatasta Bhav, then many offenses will come. Hmm? If Kirtan is going on, hmm? then she, oh, this is the Kirtan of my Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I must run there at once and dance in the Kirtan. Hmm? Otherwise, if you have to test the bar, then. So, to test the bar is not, not good for Bhakti. But here, these gopis, they're, to test, they're not to test, they have attachment to their own group, but they're to test the towards Radhika's group. And they have friendship towards Chandravali's group. So they didn't say anything. So who is left? Only Shamala and the Surit Paksh. Hmm? Because they have friendship with Radharani, <laughs> but they're not so in, in such ecstasy that they cannot speak. So Shamala and her group have said, Anaya Radhita Onuna, and loudly proclaimed as if by the beating of many kettle drums, that Radharani is supreme among all the Braja Gopis. So the fifth quality of Radhika is Charo Sobhagyari Katya, that on her feet and her hands she has auspicious lines. Charo Sobhagyari Katya, Gandon Madhita Madhava. The next quality of Radhika is Gandon Madhita Madhava. That means that her fragrance makes Krishna become unmad, intoxicated. Mm. So once mm, Radha and Krishna, they were mm, with the Sakis and they were playing in the forest of Vrindavan. And uh, they want to play hide and seek. So Krishna said, oh, all right, let's see if you can find me. So then Radhika sat down and Lalita Saki covered the eyes of Radharani and Krishna went to hide. But Lalita Saki covered Krishna's eyes like this. Radhika's eyes like this. So she could see where Krishna was hiding. So then they counted. Three, two, one, and coming. And then Radhika went and she found Krishna. Oh Krishna, you have been defeated. Now it's my turn. See if you can find me. So then Krishna sat down and Lalita covered the eyes of Krishna fully. So he cannot see. And Radhika went too high. So then Krishna, he got up and he was looking around. But then Vishaka said, Oh Radhika, your hiding is completely useless. Why? Because your enemy has the, revealed your whereabouts. Just like if you have a traitor in your group and you're at war, then the enemy, the traitor will go and tell the enemy so that they can defeat you. So she said, oh, your fragrance is like an enemy. Why? Because your fragrance is going 
and traveling to see Krishna and bringing you to him Be and because bringing him to you because you are Madhavi you know one name of Krishna is Madhav what is the significance of Madhav it has many many meanings but Madhav means the beloved of Madhavi there are 360 different types of heroines eh? in Ujjwani Lamani mm? the Abhisarika Vasaksadja Utkantita Kandita, Vipralabda, Kalahantrita, Prasita Bhattaka, Swadin Bhattaka, there are many, 360 different types. But the highest type of heroine is called the Swadina Bhattaka, who controls Krishna fully. And when the Swadina Bhattaka is at its highest extent, when Krishna cannot be separated from Radhika from even a moment, he follows her around like a shadow and obeys her every wish. So then that heroine is called Madhavi. So Krishna's name Madhavi is very full of Jai Radha Madhava. Very, very full of rasa because it indicates that Krishna is the Dilalit Nayak. Like Cupid, like the God of Love and fully controlled by Madhavi, Radhika. So Gandhun Madhava, Gandhun Madhita Madhava, the fragrance of Krishna, of Radhika, is bewildering to see Krishna. So Vishaka Saki was saying, Oh Radhika, you are like a jasmine flower and Krishna is like a bumblebee. When the bumblebee catches the fragrance of the jasmine flower, the bumblebee becomes mad and comes running there. And then the jasmine flower will have to tremble. So in the same way, you are like a Madhavi and Krishna is a Brahma. Brahma means a bumblebee, but Brahma also means a person who is very filled with so much desire as well. So Radhika is called, uh, her quality is Gandhun Madhita Madhava Yasya Kadapi Vasananchala Kailanutta Danyati Dhanya Pavanena Kritatamani Yogendra Durga Magati Madhusudan Opi Tasya Namostu Mrishobhanu Bhuvodhi Shepi Srila Prabhupada Sarasvati Thakur is saying One day Radhika was on one side of Radhakun and she had refused to meet with Krishna and Krishna came on the other side of Radhakun from far away and he was sitting there and he was in a very great um, state of uh, uh, self-criticism, nirvade, regret oh I have made an offense to Radhika and she's refusing to meet with me but then the dear Samir, very gentle breeze blew and picked up the corner of the cloth of Radhika like this you see? <laughs> and when the breeze just touched the corner of Radhika's cloth then the breeze became intoxicated because the fragrance was so sweet the fragrance of her body was transferred to her cloth and then it was touched by the breeze and now the breeze couldn't move very quickly because he was intoxicated so the breeze was staggering across the surface of Radhakun and then Krishna was sitting there and he was in a state of regret and yasya kadapi vasananchala kailanutta dhanyati dhanya pavanena kritartamani and the fragrance of Radhika was carried by the breeze and entered into the nostrils of Krishna and when Krishna smelt that fragrance Ah, Danya ti Danya. Today I am fortunate. I am so fortunate. My life has become a success. And he folded his hands and gave pranam to that breeze. So oh, thank you, breeze. <laughs> oh, dear Samir, gentle breeze, you are my real friend. My pranam to you for bringing the fragrance of Radhika. So Yogendra Durga Magati Madhusudan Opi Madhusudan Krishna is very very difficult to realize. Even for the Yogendras, the great masters of mystic yoga. Yadhyapi samadishu vidhirapi pasyati na tavanaka gramarichim. Even Lord Brahma with four heads being the highest intelligence in the universe. When he goes into his deep samadhi for a thousand years, he cannot see the light emanating from the tips of the toes of Krishna. Hmm? And if for a moment he could see Krishna, then Brahmaji would think, ah, my life is Kritartha, I am so successful. But that Krishna thinks that his life is successful when he catches the fragrance from the corner of the Anchal of Shimati Radhika. 
Therefore, Tasya Namostu Brashavanu Bhavodi Shepi, I am bowing down, not to Radhika. I am not qualified even to bow down to Radhika. I am bowing down to the direction, the Disha, in which Radhika is standing. Great humility in this prayer. So, Gandun Madhita Madhava. These are the first one, two, three, four, five, six qualities of Radharani's body. Now we come to the qualities of Radharani's voice. Sangeeta Prasara Bhikkhya. She is very expert at singing. One day, Sri Krishna was coming to uh, Yavat. And he was coming very close to Yavat. And Radhika was in a garden. And she was singing in the Pancham square, in the fifth note, very, very beautifully. And when Krishna was approaching, and he heard that note, he became completely stunned. Just like a hunter goes into the forest and sings in the fifth note and enchants the deer, to catch a deer. So in the same way, Radhika was singing and Krishna became stunned. But at that moment, Abhimanyu was coming, Radharani's husband. So one Saki of Radhika said, Oh, Saki, you should stop singing now. It is not uh, appropriate for you to be like a hunter and catching deer by your singing. But the real meaning is, the word for deer in Sanskrit is Krishna Sara. So Krishna Sara, she said this in case anyone will hear, if some of the in-laws will hear, you should not sing like this for catching deer in the, in the forest. Mm? The chaste lady should not behave in this way. Mm? But the inner meaning was that Krishna was on his way to meet. And if Krishna had seen Abhimanyu ca coming, then he could hide. But because Radhika was singing so beautifully, Krishna forgot, who am I, where am I? <laughs> and now there's a danger that he'll be caught. So on the uh, instruction of her Saki, then Radhika, she stopped singing. Krishna came out of his Samadhi and saw what was happening and quickly healed. Mm? So in this way, Sangeeta Prasara Vigya. Radhika is expert in singing. We'll speak a little bit more about Radhika singing also after. Sangeeta Prasara Vigya Ramyavan. Ramyavan means. Oh! Well, Radhika's voice is very sweet. The sound of her voice is charming. When Radhika is uh, speaking with Krishna, then Krishna hears the words. And she said, and, and Radhika's syllables coming from her lips, they're so beautiful. Krishna said, Oh Radhika, when you speak, then the cuckoo bird becomes mute. He, he loses his voice. Hmm? The cuckoo is very famous for singing sweetly. But when Radhika speaks, then the cuckoos all become ashamed and they don't sing. <laughs> and also, when you speak Radhika, then nectar faints. Because it's like nectar to the ears. But nectar cannot give joy in the presence of the syllables uttered by Shimati Radhika. Why? Because she's so overwhelmed with praying that she, sometimes she cannot pronounce her words because she becomes choked. Nayanam galada shudaraya vadanam So Ramyavan, then the next quality of radical speech is Narma Pandita. She is very, very clever at making jokes. Hmm? Very clever at making jokes. Krishna is clever, but Radhika can even defeat Krishna. Hmm? Krishna will come to Radhika and say, Oh Radhika, who is the guru and who is the student? Your eyes, you have very restless eyes. They move so quickly. Are your eyes the guru of the lightning, teaching lightning to move quickly? Or is the lightning the guru of your eyes, teaching your eyes to move quickly? Which one is it? <laughs> so then Krishna he gave an answer. He said, I think that your eyes are the guru of the lightning. Because the mind is faster than lightning, but your eyes have captured my mind. <laughs> so Krishna is very sweet. But Radharani is more expert at joking. So then Radhika said to see Krishna, Oh Krishna, who is the guru? You or your flute? Hmm? Because your flute breaks the dharma 
of all the chaste women of Braja. Mm? It makes them break all the boundaries of religion. Mm? And you also, your sweetness makes the Braja Gopis also break all the boundaries of religion. So, is it that you have taught your flute mm, to reduce Dharma in the world? Or has your flute taught you to reduce the Dharma in the world? Mm? So then, see Krishna said, it is neither of those things. The gopis never transgress Dharma because they're not sati, they're not chaste. <laughs> Don't blame me or my flute. <laughs> so then Krishna, then Radhika says, yes, yes, you are a very Dharmic Purush, I know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You are very Dharmic Purush. I, she said, I have heard of one Dharmic Purush. When he was only six days old, he killed a woman. That's how religious he is. <laughs> because when Krishna was six days old, he killed Putra. I have heard of one Dharmic Purush who was always increasing Dharma. As soon as he learned to walk, he was going from house to house stealing butter. <laughs> are you that Dharmic Purush who is always increasing Dharma? Hmm? I have heard of another Dharmic Purush that when the young unmarried gopis were bathing in the Jamuna, keeping their cloth on the bank, he came and stole all of their clothing and told them to come out from the water. Are you that Dharmic person? So in this way, Radhika is very cleverly cutting all the words of Krishna. So she is Ramyavan Nama Pandita, very clever at making jokes. Then, these are the qualities of uh, Radhika's voice. Prasara, uh, uh, Sangeeta Prasara Vigya Ramya Nama uh, Ramya Van Narma Pandita Now Radharani's personal qualities. Vinita Karna Purna Vidagda Pataman Vita Vinita means humility. Shimati Radhika is very humble. One day she was uh, sitting with her seniors and other family members and they were talking and just then Badrasaki arrived there and they saw Badrasaki coming in the distance and uh, though Badrasaki is actually of a lower status because Radharani is the daughter of a king, Brishabana Maharaj so Badrasaki is a lower status of Radhika and even though the elder, elder persons in the room all looked at her and by their eyes and don't get up, say, stay yes, sitting. Yes, but yes, still, yes, when yes, Radhika yes, saw yes, Badra coming, yes, she got up from her seat to, to greet her yes, and offer her a seat. Yes, yes, so Radhika is very humble. Also, sometimes Radharani criticizes herself because sometimes she becomes upset with Krishna and she criticizes him with very harsh words. You are just like a pet deer on the golden chain of Chandravali. Hmm? You are Lampa Chudamani, the crystal of devotees. Hmm? You are Dhurat, you are rascal. So Radhika may criticize Sri Krishna sometimes uh, and send him away and not allow him to meet with her. But then afterwards she feels regret. And then the Sakis, they go to Krishna and they tell Krishna, Oh, now please come and meet with Radhika. And then they bring the message to Radhika. Oh, Radhika, Krishna is just on his way. He'll meet with you just now. At that time, Radhika folds her hands and she's crying. And she said, Oh, why would Krishna accept me? I speak very harsh words and I was very cruel to him. Even my name is Radha. So yesterday, we gave some different meanings of the word Radha. Do you remember? What was the first meaning of Radha we told yesterday? No, I don't know. Yes? The river flowing backwards? <laughs> the current? That was not the first Dada. one. First, we told that Radha, who Dha, Dhavati, runs towards Krishna, impelled by Ra, Ra, deep love, her name is Radha. And Aradhyate Iti Radha, that person who is worshipped by Krishna is called Radha. And the Radha, whose life is the Aradhana, or everything only to please Krishna, so her name is Radha. And then he said, how oh, in praying, praying makes everything crooked, everything in a reversal. A hair, a hair, it moves in a zigzag way like a snake. So the, the love is a current, always moving, 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 and fresh at every moment. 
But when the current of praying it goes backwards, so current is called dhara. So that current of praying which becomes dhara becomes reverse, becomes radha. So it indicates the praying kutulya, the, the crookedness of Radhika's praying. So here there's another meaning, radha datu. In in Sanskrit, can one meaning is oh we gave another meaning yesterday. Who remembers the last meaning? Huh? Lightning. lightning, yes. Because Krishna is Ganesham, like a fresh rain cloud. And the word Radha means lightning. Because the lightning looks beautiful on the chest of the rain cloud. So, Radha, in Sanskrit, Radha to also means to injure. So when Radharani has criticized Krishna with harsh words and sent him away, and injured his heart, then Radharani in humility said, even my name is Radha. Because I give, I give injuries to the heart of Krishna. So our acharyas have commented, we never use this derivation, this etymology of the name Radha. We never say this. But Radhika, because her quality is Vinita Karna Puna, she is very, very humble. She takes this etymology, this derivative of her own name. Oh, I am Radha. Even my name says that I give injuries to the heart of Krishna. Alas, alas. So why is Krishna coming back to me now? With folded hands, Radharani tells to Lalita and Vishaka, Chitsa Champa Kalata. Because Krishna is controlled by the love of you, O oh my Sakis. And because I am the object of your kindness, I am the object of your mercy. This is the only reason why Krishna is accepting me. So, Binita, Radharani is very, very humble. Vinita Karna Puna Vidagda Patamandita. Now, the next quality, Rupa Goswami Pad is saying, Karuna Purna, that Radhika is full of compassion. One day, one of Krishna's milking cows gave birth to a calf. Very sweet calf. And Krishna loves all of his cows and all of his calves so much. He comes and he scratches them under the neck, <laughs> embraces them, he does puja to them, he does dandavat pranam to them. And, and says the Gosukta, the prayers to the cows from the Mahabharata is there's Gosukta. Yes. Krishna does parikrama of the cows. Krishna loves his cows very much. So one day that newly born calf was sniffing around and trying to find some, some grass. And one sharp new mm, sprout of grass poked the nose of that, of that calf and was stuck in the nose and blood was coming. So when Radhika saw that Krishna's very beloved calf had a piece of straw stuck in his nose and some blood was coming, then only seeing this, at once Radhika's heart melted. <coughs> and she, tears were flowing from her eyes. She took her own cloth and she ripped some cloth from her own cloth and be pulled out the straw and began to wipe the blood from the uh, nose of the calf. And then she took some kumkum and she put some kum because the kumkum will help the, the wound heal. And put the kumkum on the top. <laughs> so Radhika is called Karana Puna. Very soft hearted and very full of compassion. So, Binita Karana Puna Vidagda Patamam Vitna Vidagda. Radharani is Vidagda. Vidagda means that Radharani is expert in all the arts. So expert in all the arts. That means she's expert in making garlands. She's expert in decorating the kunj. She's expert in cooking. So many preparations, new new preparations every day. Just by the touch of her hand, they become fragrant and uh, like nectar. And uh, the Rasa Rishi has given her a benediction that whatever she cooks will taste more delicious than nectar and whoever eats it will never be defeated. So because many demons are coming to Vrindavan, Mother Yashoda insisted that Radharani come and cook in her kitchen so that Krishna will be protected. So we never think that Krishna has defeated all the demons. We think that Radharani's cooking has defeated all the demons because of the blessing of the Rasa Rishi. So Krishna should not get too puffed up. That is the... Mm. He has killed the, the Aristasur and others, Yomasur and others. She's expert at cooking. She's expert at gambling. She can defeat Krishna in the Chaupar, in the dice game. 
And that's called Jutu Krida. She can defeat Krishna in uh, laughing and joking that we've discussed. And she's especially expert at uh, singing, dancing, and playing musical instruments. You can see <laughs> in the Rasalila, Krishna had uh, disappeared from the Rasalila. And all Braj Gopis were burning in the fire of separation. And but when Krishna reappeared there amongst them, Tasam Avirabut Shori, Smaya Mana Mukamboja, Pitam Baradarasragvi, Saksha Manmata Manmata. When Sri Krishna appeared there, then oh, all Braj Gopis saw him. Those who were more submissive, they approached him and massaged his feet and gave him beetle. But Radhika was standing at a distance. She didn't go near him. Because she saw actually Chandravali and other gopis were submissive. They were approaching. She was thinking, why is he talking to them? Why is he accepting their service? So she was staying at a distance. But then the Braj Gopis put down an asana and invited Krishna to sit. And Krishna apologized and glorified Radhika. He said, Na pariyam niravadja samyujam swa saru krityam vibhudayu shapiva yam ma bhajan durjaya geha sankala samrasya tadva pratiyatu saduna. O my dear Gopis, I cannot repay you for even one of your loving services. Even one service you have rendered to me, I could not repay you even if I served you continuously for the life of Lord Brahma, 311 trillion years. Because you have broken all the shackles of household life and transgressed all dharma only to serve me. Now this verse, though it seems to be spoken to all the gopis, it was especially spoken to Radhika. Why? Ya Mahabhajan Durje Geya Srinkala. You can take this to me. You have left everything for me. Or Radhika has left everything. Ya Mahabhajan. Mahabhajan. Here the word Ma is a name of Sarva Lakshmi, the original Lakshmi. So here Krishna has hidden the name of Radhika because it was especially for her. So when see Krishna apologized to Radhika and glorify her love and said, I can never repay you. I am I am a Rini. I am indebted to you forever. Why? Because even if I serve you, then you will serve me more. And your love is always increasing at every moment. So I can never repay you. What to speak of repay you, I cannot even uh, pay the, uh, the amount how your love is increasing. It's called Chakravridi Brad Vyaj in uh, in Hindi. Chakravridi means compound interest. You know, if someone borrows some money, then they have to pay the interest. So as long as they pay the interest, then the original capital will remain the same. But if they cannot pay the interest, then what happens? Then you have to pay the interest on the interest, and then the loan goes out of control. So Krishna said to Radhika, Oh. What to speak of repay your love. Your love is increasing at every moment. How it's increasing? I can't reciprocate with that. So I become in this situation of Chakravriddhi. I cannot even pay the interest on your love, let alone the original, <laughs> the original loving service. So I will be indebted to you forever. When Krishna spoke these words, then oh, the heat of separation was completely vanquished. Yeah? Just like if you have a, a lamp which is on fire, and you put it out with some water, then the fire goes out. But if you touch it, it's still hot. So in the same way, when Krishna disappeared from the Rasalila, all Braj Gopis were burning in the fire of separation. And when Krishna came back, so then that separation was pacified. But there was still some heat. They were still feeling some heat. But when Krishna said to Radhika, Oh, I can never prepare you, please forgive me. Then that last heat went away. So when that last heat of separation was gone, and all Braj Gopis were very sa satisfied, then the Sakis told the Radhika, Oh, come to the Rasamanga. Hmm? And then Radhika stood up, and she said, Pyari Vyarasavilasako Moi Adhika Utsaha Chale Chale Mili 
Tan kunja ko kunja ka baba na kira Oh Krishna, I am feeling great zeal to dance with you in the Rasa Lila. So come with me to the kunjas on the bank of Jamuna. And when Radhika said this, then Krishna said, Acho Pyari! And then what happened? The Ras Lila began. Shukadev Goswami says, Rasutsavaha Sampravrito Gopi Mandala Manditaha Yogeshwarena Krishnena Tasam Madhye Tayor Tayo. He said, Rasutsava Sampravrito, the Ras Lila began. The Ras Utsav, the festival of Ras, began. He did not say that Radha and Krishna and the gopis began the Rasalila. No. He said the Rasalila began. Why? Because this Rasalila is a hit tattwa. That means praying tattwa. And praying itself, remember yesterday we were discussing, the praying has two aspects. Murta and Amurta. Praying is an emotion. It is a, without a form. And the praying also has a form and the embodiment of the highest praying is Radhika. That is Murta with a form. So without a form. So the Rasutsava is the, lead, the Ras Lila itself. The praying without a form came there and began. So Rasutsavaha Sampravrito Gopi Mandala Mandita Yogeshwarena Krishnena. Here Krishna is a, the word Krishna is Krishnena. So that is in the Tritya Vibhakti the instrumental case in Sanskrit. And the Rasutsavaha is in Pratama Vibhakti, that is the nominative case, that is Karta, the doer. So the meaning is that Radha and Krishna are not doing this Rasalila. They are only the instruments. The Rasutsava, he is praying Tattva itself, he is doing everything. This is the meaning. Huh? Just like if there is a clockwork toy, and then the clockwork toy is sitting there. But if a child will come and and then wind up the toy and then put it on the table and it begins to dance. The toy is not do the toy is only instrument, but the doer is the child who winds up the toy. So in the same way. Krishna na chaya prem, bhakta na chai, apine na chai, itina na chie katai. Krishna das Kabraj Goswami Pat said. Praying <laughs> makes Krishna dance. Praying makes Radhika and the Sakis dance. And praying itself is like a third person and all three dance together. So at that moment, Krishna was not Karta the Dua. Radhika and the Gopis were not Karta the Dua. But the praying Tattva in the form of the highest Rasutsa appeared there and took charge of all of them and they began to dance. Very beautiful. This is called this dance is called Halishak. There is many different types of dance. This dance is called Halishak, where the hero is in the middle. And the uh, ladies, the heroines, they stand around the outside and they hold hands with each other. So, the gopis were thinking, Krishna is a Shamsundra, he is a dark person and you cannot trust any dark persons. So, he already disappeared from the Ras Lila once. So, we are not going to give him a chance to disappear again. So, Gopi Mandala Mandita, they put Krishna in the middle and they all held hands. So that Krishna cannot get, get away. Hmm? So, then uh, the Ras Lila began. So, all were dancing. But after some time, they wanted to see just Radha Krishna dance together. Because then there will be competition of the arts. So here it's described, Vidagda Pataman Vita. One of the qualities of Radhika is Vidagda. That is, she's expert in all the arts. And among these, especially Gayan, singing, Vadya, playing musical instruments, and Nritya, dancing, they're prominent. So there are two types of uh, dance. One is called Nritya, and one is called Nritta. Nritya and Nritta. Is it clear? <laughs> Nritya and Nritta. So in Bharat Muni's Natya Shastra, the, he's the Shastra on Dramatics there, Bharat Muni has said, Nrityam Bhavasrayam Geyam Nrittam Talalayasrayam. The meaning is, in Nritya, Nritya, then the dance is Anukaran. 
That means an imitation or expression of emotions in the heart. So when the dance moves are expressing different emotions like an actor. An actor has to uh, physically and with his face uh, show all the feelings which are in his heart. So that is called nritya. So nitya bhava se agyam. One should know that nritya is taking shelter of the bhav, the inner feeling in the heart, and it's expressed as a type of uh, anukarma, imitation of the emotions outwardly. But nritya, nritya talalaya sreyam, is the dance is taking shelter of loy and tal. So tal means the rhythm. There are so many different types of tals you can learn from Madhav Das Brahmachari. All the tals, Eka Tal, Dhruv Tal, Kaharva Tal, Darja Tal, what other tals you want to? <laughs> so there are so many tals. And each one of these tals has different matras. Some of them have three beats, uh, three matras, three beats, four beats, five beats, six beats, seven beats, eight beats. 9 beats, 10 beats, 24 beats, 30 beats, 36 beats. So those who are very expert in music, they know how to use tal. And loi means the speed, so sometimes they also change the speed. So when the dancing is the physical expression of the rhythms, then that is called the nritta. Hmm? Okay? So nritta tal layasrayam. So then Radharani, she began to dance expressing great emotions and also expressing the various beautiful rhythms that Tunga Vidya was playing on the Merdanga and other Sakis. Also the demigods came in the sky, they also tried to play along, but they're not as good as the gopis, so they give up. <laughs> uh, they can just beat drums for the, like to make a very spectacular and shower flowers, but they cannot follow the rhythms and the, the ragas that the, that the gopis sing and, and dance with. So Shukadev Goswami is describing Padanya Sair Bujavi Duptibir Susmita Bru Vila Sair Bajan Madhyais Chalukuta Patai Kundala Gandalo Lai Sujan Mukya Kabar Rasana Grantaya Krishna Vadvo Gayanta Stam Tadita Ivata Nega Chakra Virejuhu very beautiful verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Shukadev Goswami is opening hmm, the beauty of the Rasalila. Hmm? In Brajiri said, Patute Parda Ute. When the Harikatha begins, then the curtain rises. Listening to Harikatha is not a, a class in a college. Hearing Harikatha means the curtain rises on the stage of Krishna Lila and you watch. Hmm? Like cinema. Shakta Brahma gives a vision in the heart of the past. So Shukadev Goswami is seeing the Rasalila. This Rasalila he's seeing in his heart, he's turning to words, comes from his mouth, it goes in the ear of Prikshit Maharaj, and then that sound in the heart of Prikshit Maharaj becomes the Lila again. So it's direct transmission of Anubhav, realization. This is the real meaning of Harikatha. So Shukadev Goswami is saying, Pada Nyasa Bhuja Vidutibi. Pada Nyas means the placement of the feet. Huh? So the, the, the placement of the feet is exactly following the rhythms of the, of the drumming. So the, in the Rasalila, then the gopis are using this rhythm. This mantra. <laughs> so Radharani's feet are dancing following this rhythm. Very beautiful. And they, the art of the dance is they can isolate each part of the body. So one part of the body is moving, but the other part is still. And it makes a very astonishing effect. So Radharani's feet are dancing according to this movement. So Pada Vyasa Bhuja Viduti Bir. And then when her legs become still, then her arms start moving to the beat. Like this. And the rest of the body has become still. So, Padanyasa, Bhuja Viduti Bi, Susmita, Bruvil. Then Susmita means the smile. Because in Bharat Natyam, you have to learn how to dance with your face as well. So then Radharani's whole body became still and then her mouth started dancing. <laughs> and then her eyebrows 
So in this way, Shukadeva Goswami is describing the beautiful dance of Radhika, which is enchanting Krishna and all the gopis, as each part of her body is dancing. Bruvilasa. But Janmadhyais means her waist is very thin and she begins spinning around and leaning over. It looks as if her waist will break even from the depth. If you see how the hips move to all the rhythms. But Janmadhyais Chalukuta Pataye and her um, Dopata, her upper cloth, her Anchal. She's uh, sw swinging around and her Anchal is like a flag behind. And Gundala Kandalo. Uh, Kundala Gandalola and as she stops then her earrings are swinging and it's making reflections and now the reflections are dancing on her cheeks Swidyan Mukya Kabarasana and perspiration now usually if you dance very energetically because it's COVID we have to shut all the windows there's no air in the room everyone's, and everyone's sweating because it's hot and it's hard work but when Radhika is dancing Oh, there's a cool breeze on the bank of the Jaguna in the moonlight. Her perspiration is the suede. That means the sattvic bhav. Because of ecstatic love for Krishna, it's causing perspiration to appear on the forehead of Radhika. And Radhika's forehead is decorated with a pearl ornament called bandini. Hmm? But when the pearls of perspiration appear on her forehead, then they criticize the pearls of her bandini. Huh? Who, who are you? What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> now you should retire, we have come. <laughs> that means that the pearls of her perspiration are much more beautiful, even than the bandini pearl ornaments on her forehead. Sudhyan Mukya Kabarasana Grantayo Krishnavadvo. So generally people they describe that the cloth, the gopis have tied their cloth tightly so it will not come off when they dance. But here Mm. Kabara Rasana Grantaya. It is not Grantaya that the cloth was tied tightly. Ah, Grantaya. That she's dancing so fast that the knots in her cloth begin to come loose. Mm. And her, the knot in her hair, Kabara. Kabara means her, uh, her ponytail also comes open and her hair is also scattering everywhere as she's dancing. Very, very beautiful. Kabara Rasana Grantaya Krishna Bhattu. Who is she? Krishna Bhattu. Krishna Bhattva. Vadu means wife. Badnati hmm? itu Vadu. That person who binds the hero with love is called a Vadu. So the gopis, they have bound Krishna with the rope of love. But they are not his. Uh, this is not the Swakya mood. Only it is that uh, they have bound here. Bhattva doesn't mean they're his wives, but they have bound him with their brain. And Vadu here is in the plural. Vadu Badwa is in the plural because Radhika herself has become all the other gopis who are dancing in the Rasa. Grantai Vokashvatu Gayantastam Tadita Ivata Megga Chakri Virejahu. And in that dancing, now uh, Radharani is singing Gayantas. Krishna. Krishna Vadvo Gayanta means the Radhika and the gopis are singing the name Krishna. So Krishna is so beautiful that he is the ornament of his ornaments. He makes his ornaments more beautiful. But Krishna becomes more beautiful when he is with Radhika and Braja gopis. And Braja gopis become more beautiful when Krishna Vadboga Yantyaha. When gopis do kirtan of Krishna. The names of Krishna. Then they become even more beautiful. So here Radhika is described <laughs> when she's dancing. That she is like a flash of lightning on a rain cloud. Hmm? The meaning is that the lightning can never live without the cloud. So just as the lightning can never live or be separated from the cloud, so Radhika cannot live without Krishna and can never be separated from him. So her name Radha also means lightning. So Rupa Goswami here is saying, Vanita Karna Puna Bidagda Patabangmita. Patabangmita means Radhika is very cunning. And uh, 
but we'll describe that tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> so for today, uh, we have tried to describe how many qualities did we discuss today? One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm -hmm. Then. Sangita Prasagya, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 qualities we have told today. So the other 13 called 12 today, and 13 will tell tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> Extended Radastami Mahamahotsavaki. Yeah. Yeah.